We are back with Project Nomang, and George, what are we doing on this episode? Well, uh, we're waiting for some parts. Um, so while we're waiting, we are able to get a hold of a good friend, Ilias, from Spec2D. He does all our CAD drawing, laser cutting, NC folding stuff, so I thought we'll get him down. We can fabricate a lot of the stuff that we're probably going to make today, but we thought for the sake of the project um, and possibly for anyone else that wants to do the same, it might be a good idea to have the stuff available. So, um, yeah, As the saying goes, do it once, do it right. Yeah, that's it. And it'll be on, you know, we can have it on file. Whenever we need another one made, we can just cut it up again. So. We'll draw some stuff up today for the shifter, the e-pedal. That'll be majority stuff based for the um, for the conversion. Otherwise, while we've got him here, um, we'll get some other stuff done that I want for the car. So, i.e. catch can, radiator shrouds, just other little bits and pieces to tidy the bay up. So we'll get that done today, get him on his laptop and uh, his little measuring tools out, and um, we'll get onto that and go from there. All right, let's get into it. Done. All right, so we've got the man, the myth, the legend, Louis from Spec2D. He or likes Ilias, to be called. He Ilias. likes to be called Ilias. He's gone fancy. He's gone boutique <laughs> on us. All right, so um, Ilias is going to be doing all the drawing today, and um, you might have seen him in uh, previous videos on QuickBit stuff because he works there part time. That, that's correct. Oh, no, full time this year. Oh, full time. There you go. Yeah, yeah. There you go. Just don't tell the ATO. Um, <laughs> now, nah, so um, yeah, we've got Ilias here, so we'll get we'll get stuck into ripping the pedal out and um, going from there, I guess. So. Time to get underneath the dash. Yeah. All right, so what we need to do first is we're gonna take off the accelerator pedal because uh, the factory ECU on the uh, Ford software stuff um, that we're using uh, runs an electronic throttle. So we need to swap over the cable throttle of the VS onto a electronic throttle from the FG. Um, so we'll take this one off. We're gonna design and manufacture a bracket to accommodate the FG pedal and then we'll mount that up and then we can go from there. So we'll get started by taking the old one off first, I guess. If I can get that in. You almost better put it on an angle here or cut into that and have it in as much as you can like that. No chance. I'm the man that's Honda style. Yeah, man. No, no, but think about it. If that drops another thing out there, it'll be like that. Nah, no, 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 no. Once, look, once this, once we trim all this plastic away, drill the hole and get it sitting in the actual tunnel, no, it'll drop, it'll much. drop an inch. How about we do this? Because I know that that's going to be tight. Mm -hmm. Why don't you get your air hacksaw out? I'm drilling and, that. And just cut out that corner. What, of the, of the plastic? No, nah, not, not of the plastic. You've got to do the metal. So you happy with that? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. So what we've basically done yeah. is we've offset this mm -hmm. from the original datum point on the, on mm -hmm. the firewall. Mm -hmm. So we've basically offset it so the pedal sits in roughly this location. Yeah. And we've created that angle there mm -hmm. so that when you bolt it back up, the pedal sits in the same spot. In the same spot. Okay, good. As long as you're happy with that. Yeah. We're gonna make it out of three mil. So don't make, don't put a gusset on it yet. We'll make it out of three mil. Yeah, yeah. Get it cut if it needs folding and. Yeah, look, because crap, it's a one, that. because it's a one twenty fold, they generally can't go beyond ninety. Yeah. And we might do a hand fold. Okay. All right, so All that right. one's done. I'll All save right. that. that. Beautiful. Done. Done. Now. That's as low as it goes. Yeah. Well, we can go lower if we open this up, and get it inside here. The biggest challenge are those studs. Well, the studs aren't a problem because we can punch them out and screw it on. Like, it's not a problem. Because they're only pressed in, so I can pop them out if we want. There's a little plate underneath which covers that up. Oh, this one here? Yeah. This one. Is that right? Yeah. So that goes so, on top so there. So technically that needs that, to go? Well, technically, yeah. yeah to well, keep it all sealed up. So we need to have that on. And that's probably the, the bottom point, yeah. So and it can't be there because it things in the way. Yeah, but you don't have much room under here. Like There's not a lot either, that's, is there? That, that's right up on the box is it yeah oh so that's that's it man that's all we can do that's where it has to go yeah yeah you're better off putting in a um a b and m mega shifter mega shifter mega shifter of death man yeah and, and get the the cover for it as well sick with a t-handle yeah and the chrome surround yes what that, that, wouldn't that look good that'd be great it'd suit it mate why not mate. Just the, you know the guys used to put the one with the yeah, with a little the two finger one. Yeah, v, uh, vertical gate shifter. Oof! Look out, we're going hardcore now. <laughs> um, so I think that's it. But then we need to then Six. cover it up.
All right, so what we need to do now is, because we're running the ZF gearbox, the six-speed, out, out of the FG, we need to utilise the factory shifter because it runs all the electronics to run the, to run the gearbox. So what we need to do is mould this, and as you can see, it is quite tall. But what we're going to do is we want to get this into the factory VS spot. But as you can see, the gearbox sits quite high as well, unlike uh, you know, most of the turbo um, 400, 700 power glide stuff, which run at quite, quite a small output shaft. The ZF is quite chunky at the back. So that does limit how far down we can mount this. Um, and, and as you can see, as you can see, we're running, a, the, the VS has got a, a shallower um, center console area than the four does, which is quite tall, which it hides all this. So unfortunately we're gonna have to be able to mount this first and then we'll figure out a way how to, how to trim it and, and make it work and look presentable, I guess. One thing that I need to point out too, have you got a rubber donut that goes on the back of here? I don't know if I'm gonna be running one. I might run a direct, because it's an input shaft too, so it's got the normal splines on it. I might oh, able, it does? Yeah, I might be able to run that. I don't know, I've got to speak to the tail shaft course. Because yeah, I reckon the donut might interfere with that. Possibly. Possibly. Well, a 1350 yoke, if you could get one or something similar, mm. will eliminate all that. Yeah, all, all that. that. I, yeah, that. Which, oh, I sort of. They're only, only about that wide. Yeah, I, I reckon we can. We'll see. But anyway, let's mount this first. And... Fucking angle the cut, man. Well, you want it like this? Yeah. yeah, but then the tail shaft's in the way, you spaz. Just put it right down there, right in the guts, mate. Let's see it like that. The tail shaft is in the way. Yeah, it will be. Absolutely will be. Nah, I'll just keep it as straight as possible. George. Yo. What is going on with this radiator? It looks like it's on the PI double five, eh? It is. It's cooked. But this radiator, mate, has gone 9-1, over 150 mile an hour in the VT. Hey, in my V6. But as you can see, before we fire ring the block, we were lifting the heads. And obviously we'll get in boost into the um, into the water system. A little bit. So the fix for that was, the easy fix was, get a radiator cap that's got more pressure on top. So uh, that's 25 pounds of boost in your, in your radiator. That's what it does on a nice alloy radiator. But there's nothing wrong with it because it still works. Um, and so we're just going to modify it and fit it in here because it's budget where we can. Yeah. <laughs> we budget where we can. <laughs> You've also done an intake? Yes, yeah, we ended up doing a bit of a, a bit of an intake. We sort of kicked it up and brought it over so we've got more room for the ra bottom radiator hose. Put a nice K&N pod filter, four inch intake. It is a three inch snout on the factory turbo, uh, but what we've done is we've got some uh, rubber spacers, adapters, which bring it up to four inch. That way we can just keep it all one, one, one size, so four inch. So, And we just put the heat shields on as well. We also finished off the dump pipe as well and um, Ryan at Race Coatings finished um, coating that up for us as well. So that's ready to go on as well. Um, so as you can see, we've blocked that off because we've got the external wastegate. That's been a ceramic coated, oxy sensor bung, and V-banded. So that can go on um, soon too when we start doing the, uh, the exhaust. Probably do that on a later episode, I reckon. Pretty much hot sides, almost pretty much done, really. And where were you gonna put the uh, catch can? Catch can's gonna fill up all this area here. So I've got to get rid of all these here. Now that we've got lube, we'll, we'll cover all this area up as much as we can. Might even make a little, make the can go around the, the factory washer bottle. Keep that. I think it'll just be a nice little touch to have it go around there. And then we'll do a, a twin filter catch can and, and go from there. A couple of dash 10 fittings and we'll run some lines to the, um, to the rocker cover, which we had the weld ons fitted last time. So You were talking earlier about possibly putting a fuel surge um Surge tank. Surge tank under the inlet manifold. Yeah, well, I've, I've been yeah, I've been playing with with some aftermarket ones at the moment. Nothing's really fitting to my liking. So I think what we might do um, as well when it comes to the fuel system is um, either chop one up and make it work or make something up from scratch, yeah. I guess. You know? Well, I'll see what... Um, I'll do some research and see if we can get something that might fit in. Yeah, so it's, it's something that's compact that can fit two pumps. Depends what pumps we end up getting to. We've got to, we're going to start doing some research on what pumps we're going to get. Um, and then if we have to go to in-tank pumps, then we'll figure something out with a factory tank or something. We've got, we've got options and we'll figure it out as we go. Um, but for the moment, well, no, I'll, just, I'll just put the fuel rail on to see where we're at with spacing. We finished off the radiator cap as well on the, 
um, on top of the thermostat housing. Yep. So that's all done as well. Um, and the battery's going to have to... The battery's going to go in the boot, yeah. Yeah, yeah really keep that all nice and neat. We'll do the cabling and that um, soon, run the cables to the boot. So we're getting there. It's looking a bit more fuller in here. Yeah. Oil line as well, we finished off. Got that powder coated as well, so run the hard yeah, line. Yeah, you don't even notice it, do you? No, that's why I've, I've got it done in black, you know, yeah. make it, use a standard one and get it made in uh, powder coated black, just tidy it up. I've got to go into this flange here. There's a lot of flange. There's a lot of flange. A lot of flange talk. Bingo. That's now it. we're talking. That's better. I don't know whether it's worth leaving that and I'll drill the holes. I can nut cert that. So we've done throttle pedal. Yep. We've done pedal bracket, yep. shifter bracket, yep. or shifter plate. I want to do... That's probably the easiest, that one. We'll there. do that one. So we'll do radiator shroud and then catch can. Well, with the drop box, what we're able to do now is we can mount that to the to the body, that cut out in the, where the old shifter was, the hole in the, in the floor pan, pretty much. We'll, we'll put the, the drop box in there and then that gives us the ability to slot that in at, at the right position and then bolt it down where we want to. And then obviously we just, the, the, the factory cable, because it's cable driven, goes into there. So then we'll still need to run the cable through the body and out to the, to the gearbox. So uh, the drop box essentially just gives us a, a platform to bolt this to, realistically. So that's pretty much um, the gist of it. And now the beauty is, is that we've got one drawn up, ready to be reproduced when needed. So if this becomes a successful little option and it works well, well, give us a buzz. Uh, it's a 5.3 cast iron motor. Um, we did a build on it, rods, pistons, uh, custom turbo camshaft, uh, forced inductions, billet, 76 mil turbo. Pretty much everything else that goes with it, you know, turbo 400, fuel system. So it's still a 5.3 capacity? 5.3 capacity, yeah. Yeah. They're standard bore. It's a basic package, you know, nothing special, studs, gaskets. The usual stuff that works. Yeah, I'm just playing with this for the moment, trying to get it where I want to. Are you reading some comments on Project Nomad, George? I was, before. Some, uh... Yeah, they're always interesting, aren't they? Now I can understand why you've got a whole bench talk concept based off there. There's some real rocket surgeons in there, isn't there? Oh, they're great. Yes, they are, they are great, yeah. It always makes me wonder, has the, has the internet made us smarter with a plethora of information at our uh, at our fingertips, or has it just brought the stupid people forward and given them a voice? I think it's number two. I think so too. I think we all agree. <laughs> so they'll cover all that up. We'll get that powdered black as well, I reckon. Put a couple of stickers on it. One step closer. Now we're gonna do a catch can. Where do you, first and foremost, where's it going? Over there. But I want it, right? I want it to, to take up all this area here, but go around the Jesus washer bottle. Christ. Now, I don't care about this plate because what I'll do is I'll, I'll cut like a two and a half inch tube or something, whatever ends up being the radius. I can cut that and run that down and then make my plate. So really I need a base plate and a top plate and then I can make the height. I can get like some um, yeah, okay. 50 mil and, and make it. So all I want is a top plate and a base plate. Okay. Well, no holes, nothing, I'll do the rest. That's pretty basic. That's what I'm saying. It's pretty basic and then I'll do the rest because then I'll figure out so the, the height. So the top plate and the base plate are going to be the exact same? Exactly the same. Yeah, it's just, just a double copy. Yeah. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we've got the same shoes on and we've got the same... <laughs> Look at this. Puma, mate. Puma, Puma, black, grey. You Jesus came coordinated. Christ. Jesus. Yeah, you've got heaps of room. You know, if it sits... Like we'll move some shit out of the way, but if that sits there... And you can put, you know, your two filters there or there. Utilize this area. There and there. And then I can put one, two there and run them. Yeah, and then have and then you can have two hoses going all the way to the back for another catch can. To fill up. To fill up. Yeah. Just in case. The blow by. <laughs> on the tune up. <laughs> <laughs> this is this is full load. Do me a favor. Just radius that edge. Yeah. Radius yeah, that, that edge. Better. Yeah, radius that edge. All right. So because of the, not complexity, but because we sort of want to go around the washer bottle, I think what we'll do is we'll just, we'll just get uh, Lou to draw us up top and bottom plates. I mean, it's not hard to make this anyway, but while we've got him here, it'd just be easier to just get it all cut up. So we'll do the top and bottom plates. And then what we'll do is um, I'll get some, some flat plate, 
probably about 100 mil tall, which will then get our heights correct. And then I can just form it all around here. I might need a cut a tube or something for there. And, and then once we form all that, then, then we can weld it all up and then we'll put the top plate on and then we can put our holes and start mounting our, our filters and our, our fittings for our weld on. So um, we'll just get some top and bottom plates made and then that, that gives us our, our, a good foundation to, to build the, the catch can on, I guess. So seeing as we've got Louis here doing some drawing and folding and stuff, I thought it might be easy as well just to get him to make a, uh, a fan shroud for the radiator. We're going to say a big thank you to the boys at Speed Pro. Marcus and the boys down there gave us a, a spell fan, 16 inch spell fan, which is as slim as we're going to be able to get to fit in between radiator and engine, which we don't have a lot of room, but this does fit really well. So yeah, big thank you to them and a good quality product too. Um, and very important, obviously, in summertime as well. Uh, important product to get right. So try not to cheap out on these stuff, guys, because yeah, they've got to be top quality. So a good spell fan. These don't look stock. They are, they've got hubcaps on them. <laughs> now nah, look, uh, I think from the start I did say that we were gonna fit some um, ET streets on them. 255 radial was the radial of choice. Guys are going quick now on 235s as well, so we, we sort of did have that option as well, but I already had these and they fit. And we didn't want it looking too ballooned, if you know what I mean. Well, I, I think this is just mm, on the limit. Yeah, is. I think the 235s are a little bit lower profile again, they'll probably look a bit neater as well. But these fit, they look okay. Gives the car a bit of a decent yeah. stance as well. So, um, and that's literally just bolted straight on. Uh, I had, you know, I had the um, the 15 by 8 scepters lying around the shop. I bought them off another car that had, you know, similar size tire on. So, that does work. Uh, we still need to roll the guards. We'll do that. That's no problem. Um, we'll get that done once the car's running. We can take it to a shop and get that done. Um, but yeah, we've got the X's on. They're a great tyre. I know heaps of guys are going fast with them. So I think we can leave them on for the, for the duration of the car, the life of the car, you know. So um, I don't think we need to go a bigger tyre. Not tire. at all. No. Nah. Um, so I think we're, we're, we're pretty well sorted uh, come rear tyre. I think and that, the aim with this car is not to go overboard in any one area. Correct, yeah. And that's, that's the whole point, yeah. We're keeping it as, as timid as possible, really. So I think this is, this is a, good, a good option and I think it'll work well. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, we'll find out in the near future. But yeah, I think they're, they're, they're pretty cool. They look good too. Another day down, mate. And this one was a bit different. Yes, I didn't have to get as dirty today. You don't get dirty at all, so that's not a problem for you. But no, um, look, it's, it's the little things sometimes that matter. And attention to detail, I've always taken pretty seriously. Yeah. Most of, you know, when setting up an engine bay. Um, but because we're, we're you know, we're, the, the car is representing us, I think attention to detail is probably a little bit more important this time as well. So, yeah, getting, getting Lou down to do some uh, CAD drawing and 3D modelling of stuff and getting that stuff organised, it just makes... Fantastic service. Great yeah. service. It's, you know, like, we're lucky he's a good mate of mine. So, you know, I've always got him on call for this sort of stuff. But, you know, it just, it just makes a world of difference where you can just have someone that knows what they're doing, draw something up. Yeah, I can fabricate the stuff and, yeah. you know, we can... But what's your time worth? It's exactly. Yeah. And you know what? He gets it done a lot quicker. But it's always going to look nicer if it's been... It's always going to look better because I can't get, you know, the radiuses and the edges and the finishes like, like a, a machine can. Do you know what I mean? So at the end of the day, man, like it's, it's such a, a great option to have. You know, as a workshop, I use it everywhere, you know. He, he, he does a lot of stuff for me. If anything's ever done laser cut or, or drawn or, you know, cut up for me, it's, it's done through Lou and he does, a, he does a great job at it. And, you know, we work together well. So it's going to be good. Can't wait to get the stuff. Can start finishing the stuff off and powder coating it and fitting it off and, you know, making everything work. And then it just makes a world of difference. And if anyone else is interested in the products and, you know, hit us up online and, or give us a call at the shop and, you know, we can always on sell the stuff and make life easier for everyone else too. So yeah, it, so it works like that. We've really got to finish off the exhaust. Yes. Uh, and the fuel system and the electronics are the main. Pretty much, that's three. pretty much all that's left. Yeah, so fuel system, you know, we'll, we'll take up another well, another episode. Yeah, we'll talk about that before. There's a few different options there, but yeah. we haven't decided. No, on we haven't decided. No, we don't know which way we're going to go either too and, you know, what options we have. And I mean, we know what options we got. Um, but we're just trying to figure out which way we go about it. Um, but yeah, there's some more bits and pieces to do. So, yeah, we've got a couple of episodes in front of us where we can start finishing the car off. Electronic side of things is going to be fun. You're still going to need to move the battery in the boot as yeah. well. I'd probably say we're at the halfway mark. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, you know, naturally we're at the halfway mark. Um, so we can, we can sort of start piecing the things together and, and getting closer to 
to being finished and turnkey, and then we can do some dyno time and drive time, and yes, yeah, be cool, man. It's getting Can't there. Wait to hear yeah. It. Can't wait to hear that scream. It's George. gonna be great. It's gonna be music to my ears. <laughs> Don't know about yours. But yeah, no, it should be cool, man. It's All right. Good. Until next time, no mang. No mang. <laughs>